Hello and welcome to another video review and how to. This time we have this, Scenic Rust by Deluxe Materials. It's an out of the bottle solution which allows modellers and hobbyists to create rust. In this video I'll take a detailed look at the product, show you how to get the most out of it and how to combine it with other paint effects for maximum realism. Rust is one of those challenges in modelling that can be recreated a number of ways. Part of that challenge is to make a realistic scale rust effect that works in miniature. But this method from Deluxe Materials may be new to you. Deluxe Materials is a well-known and highly respected modelling brand and here is their scenic rust pack in more detail. It boasts that you can create real rust effects within hours on all paintable surfaces and that's the key thing. This product uses and creates real rust on or under your finishes. As a result in the pack you get three bottles. A scenic binder, basically a brushable glue, rust powder which contains very fine metal particles and a rust developer which is your catalyst to kick off the oxidization process. You also get a mixing pot, a pipette and spatula. It's important not to cross contaminate these as you'll see later on. Within the pack are also some simple step by step instructions. To showcase this product we've got these test pieces. There's a Sherman hull, a resin fuel tank from Berlinden and a scrap piece of plastic card for testing various effects. If you're going to apply this as a surface effect on top of a paint layer then it's a simple case of mixing it up as a paste as per the instructions. Take some of the scenic rust powder and transfer it to the mixing jar. An old pipette is an easy way to do this. Then you take some of the scenic rust binder and apply enough to create a thick paste. You can decide how thick you want it depending on the effect you're after. Then you just take a paintbrush and apply the mixture over your model. Here again you can go heavy or light but you need to remember that this will create 3D rust. The metal particles will sit proud of the surface. They're very fine but they will be noticeable. The best way to think of how this will appear is like bubbles of surfaced rust. On the test card various thicknesses of paste are applied to sample different effects. Around this hole the application is quite thick in order to show heavy rust around a shell penetration and a subsequent fire. In a wrecked tank for example. Then it's a case of leaving it to dry. It's worth noting that the binding product leaves a satin residue. You can see that here. So if you don't want that to show, say if you're using this on a painted model, you need to wipe it all away with water before it dries. Or only apply the mix exactly where you want 3D rust. When it comes to creating the actual rust you need to use the developer. Which is a light blue colour and is seemingly a dangerous product so handle with care. Just make sure when transferring it that you do not cross contaminate the pipette supplied in the pack. Then it's a case of waiting. Used out of the bottle the developer starts to get to work in 8 to 12 hours but it will depend on a number of factors. As you can see if you want a subtle rust effect use a small amount of developer and wait. If you want a more visible oxidization then reapply as here. As you can see on these parts of the test card we applied it pure. However to experiment and see if it was possible to speed things up a mixture of household salt and a little water was applied. This was used on some parts of the test card and mainly on the Sherman hull. Alternating coats of the salty mix and the developer were built up over the model. It definitely sped up the process and created a more orangey rust shade. Further applications of the salty mix really start to get a very deep rust colour. You can see this in these close ups. You can also see the salt residue which of course needs to be brushed or blown away. 
Here too, on the horizontal rust streak, which received the salty mix, it is more corroded and more orange. So when applied over a surface, you have a number of options to control the colour of rust and the thickness of it. There is another option that was experimented with, and that's to use saline solution. You can buy this straight off the shelf from chemists, and it was applied on some of the test areas to see how it would fare. This also speeded up the rusting process, and you'll see me use it later on. This product definitely has uses in other hobbies and crafts, as you can see when it's used to weather and rustify this box. It's applied quite thickly using the spatula all around the lid, and that gives an effect like this after a couple of days. What about applying it under a paint finish? This works just as well when combined with other well-known painting techniques. To show this, the tank was stripped back and primed in a suitable brown colour. It was then sealed with clear, though any varnish would also work. Then it's just a case of proceeding as before. Mix up your paste, apply in the areas where you want surface rust, and then let it dry. You can then apply the developer as before in the quantity that you want. In this case, a saline solution was tried after the developer to see what the effect was. Further applications of developer and saline solution were applied and the tank was left to sit for six days. It left this very convincing, slightly orange coating of rust. Why wait so long? Well, this is certainly not ideal if you're in a hurry. But where this comes into its own is the surface effect, or 3D rust, you can create under a paint coat. To achieve that, the model is sealed in clear, though any other varnish will do. Then you can use any of the many chipping products, or even hairspray, to create a coating over the subject. With that dry, you can spray your top coats, in this case some Vallejo and Tamiya acrylic paints airbrushed over the model. Then using water, you can gently attack that top coat. The chipping product underneath will gradually loosen and then allow paint to peel away, revealing the rust below. Where there's surface rust, it should just reveal the high points. The effect is really convincing, especially in areas where heavy corrosion would occur, like at the base of the fuel tank. You can then build paint effects on top of the work you have done. Rust pigment mixes are airbrushed over the whole tank. This harmonises the scenic rust work, ties everything together and replicates rust staining or the finest coating of corrosion. If you're using oils or enamels, you can adjust and blend everything with thinners. But in this case, the liquid pigment remover by Life Color allows you to do the same thing. When combined, this gives you a rusty old tank that could have been sitting for years, slowly decaying in a salvage yard. This is certainly a novel and interesting way to recreate, or rather create, actual rust on your models. It's a slow process with all sorts of possible outcomes and effects, depending on a whole host of different factors, from time to the number of coats of application and any other solutions you add to the process. Its strength without question is to create that surface 3D effect, which is really useful and unique. But this is a product with loads of potential uses. It's a valuable addition to your weathering techniques and it's certainly a different way of going about creating your rust effects. This great innovative product is available from Hysterex agents along with other references from Deluxe Materials and thousands of other useful modelling products. Until the next time, do subscribe for all our latest videos and check out the rest of our channel for more modelling guides. Bye.